guys, it's Rachel here with Sins of Tempo Connie Corso. So I'm out here with the dogs, some of the dogs. I got my bullies over here. We're in a heat wave. And as you can see, they're doing really good. They're not overly hot at all. Um, I keep checking on them <clears throat> just to make sure, but they're doing really good. So I wanted to do a video today because um, somebody, one of y'all, <laughs> called animal control on me and um, over Bella, Bella Rose. And um, truth be told, truth be told, I'm actually not mad about it. I want to tell you why. So um, one of the things that I have found and I've often complained about is the fact that a lot of times people will kind of get starstruck with YouTubers and um, they won't, they'll kind of ignore issues um, or like things that, you know, could be problematic um, simply because they really like the person. They'll make excuses for them and, uh, and, you know, you can't do that, right? Like, um, there's got to be accountability. And uh, and you guys don't know me. You know, I can tell you that I took her to the vet, but you don't know that. And so, <clears throat> you know, whoever it was, I don't blame you. And in fact, I want to thank you because it shows that, you know, you have the dog's best interest at heart. And, um, and you're willing to do the right thing to make sure that she's doing good. Now, um... You know, they came over, they completed their call, saw that there was nothing wrong, um, and they left. And it was a very positive experience for me because I don't have it. And that's the thing about, <clears throat> that's the thing about it, right? Is like the only reason that I would be mad is if I had something to hide, which I don't. So for me, um, you know, we both, not gonna lie, we both kind of chuckled about it a little bit because... What he said, what he said was that you know he watched the video, that he said that she looked fine, that he said that I very clearly knew what I was talking about, um, and that you know he just needed to come and and um, complete his call and do his job, which is fine. I totally get it. Um, but the thing is, is that you guys don't really know me. You may think you know me, but you don't really know me, and and I don't. You know, I don't, um, I would rather somebody call animal control on me than go online and just tell everybody that I did something wrong. When the reality is, is that <clears throat> the only people that know if I did something wrong are people that can actually come and verify my story, which they did. And, uh, and I think that we do need to be able to hold each other accountable to make sure that we're doing things right. Cause there's been quite a few YouTubers who have been busted, um, not being who they said they were. Um, and I'll be real with you. Like, like I said, I've been frustrated by it. I am not going to say any names, but, uh, many times I get mentioned <clears throat> along with other, um, Corso breeders that, you know, are not doing things the way that I do them. And, um, and oftentimes I will be very annoyed by that because in my mind, I don't like being compared with people that I don't feel are um, doing what I'm doing, that, that, I don't, that I don't feel maybe have the same quality that I have or that have the same standards or are doing, you know, going as far as I am, um, you know, health testing, whatnot, all this stuff, right? So, um and so anyway, and as there, there's this saying and it says, stop making stupid people famous. Uh, and I agree with that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm glad that, um, <clears throat> that there are still people out there that are willing to, you know, look past the attention, the, the fame, not in my sense of, of fame. I would not, I would not consider myself to be like a famous person by any stretch, but you know, that whole, that whole thing, right? That whole, um, no, don't you go over there, Nirvana. 
Um, you know, we need to, you need to not believe everything you hear, right? And I tell people that all the time. Don't just believe what I say. Go look at it for yourself. You guys know that. I've read all these studies and stuff, and I always tell you, do not take my word for it. Go and research it yourself. And so in a way, I'm very proud of this person because, you know, even though it was directed at me, they did what I've always advocated for people to do, which is don't just trust people just because they say something, you know? Um, <clears throat> ah, Bella, um, make sure that what they're saying is true. And when it comes to something as serious as the health of a dog, um, it is a very serious thing. And so, you know, I, um, I am more appreciative of, like I said, of an individual checking, making sure, instead of just making the assumption that I'm not doing everything right and then going around telling everybody, right? Because ultimately, it's not true. We absolutely did take her to the vet. She did have mastitis. There's nothing you can do about mastitis. It happens. It even happens to women. Um, and, you know, it just is what it is. Like, um, we have to roll with the punches. We have to, as the Bible says, it rains on the just and the unjust alike. So, um, and you just, you have to be able to have the skill and the knowledge to take care of these situations when they happen, to know what to do. Um, and that's why I've always been really open and honest. And I will say that, you know, like my bestie Reese, you guys know Reese with Spresso Tora County Corso, she always tells me and always warns me, Rachel, don't, don't put stuff online. Like, don't do that because you give people the ammunition to shoot you with. But on the flip side, um, and I've always said this, how is anyone supposed to know if no one ever shows the truth? You know what I mean? It's no wonder why there's so many backyard breeders out there because all they ever see is the good. All they see are happy, healthy puppies getting sold, you know, and they think that it's this big way to make a lot of money. And how are they supposed to know how hard it can be, how difficult it can be, and how traumatic it can be if no one ever shows them the bad, right? But along with showing people the bad means that you are putting yourself at risk because because no one ever talks about this stuff and because nobody ever shows this stuff, um, when people see it, as I said in my other video, it's very um, startling. It can be very traumatizing to people and they don't, they don't know what they're seeing <clears throat> and all they know is that they've seen all of these you know, animal rights activist videos of these suffering animals, of these hurt animals, and so they equate looking at Bella Rose with abuse. Because they don't have any other context for it. They've never seen a dog look like this from a good breeder. You know what I mean? So they don't know, they don't know how to handle that um, emotionally and cognitively. Um, come here, Bella. And like I said, on the flip side, like I said, there, there is, a, there is a, an area of, hey, you know, how can I even trust this individual anyway? This is just a YouTube personality, right? Now, I will say that to some degree, um, those of you that have been watching for a long time, you know about Mona. You know that she went through this. She looked just as bad and she came through it. But I don't know how long this person who called had been watching my channel. You know what I mean? It could have been a first time, you know, watcher. So for all we know, they don't have that context to know that when I say something, I'm being honest. I mean it. Um... But like I said, as long as you don't have anything to hide, it really doesn't matter when they come over. You know what I mean? Animal control, really and truthfully, if you're a breeder, they should be uh, people that you're friendly with. They should be people that you know. Um, you know, you should have a good relationship with them because, you know, they're the ones who are going to be checking in on you from time to time. <clears throat> so for me personally, it's not a big deal. I have a you know, I've, I have a good relationship. I've never had a, a bad relationship with, with the people here for medical control. Now, it is a different atmosphere here, I will say, than Austin. Like, when I used to live in Austin, there's just a lot of animal rights activists, so they really just don't like breeders in general. It doesn't matter how good of a breeder you are. But here, there's a lot of breeders. And, um, and in fact, there's, like, a lot of, like, backyard breeders. So these people always marvel at the way that I take care of my dogs. I mean, my dogs are indoors. My dogs have air conditioning. My dogs um, are not living um, in the way that a lot of people's dogs live around here because there's a lot of hunting dogs here. People will have literally like hundreds of dogs 
Um, there's actually like deer hunting here where they will release them and they will run and they get hit by cars and it's just a lot. So it's a very different atmosphere here um, in regards to dogs. So my dogs are considered like bougie dogs, which is exactly what they are. Um, and so, you know, I don't have any qualms about it, but I did think that it was, I thought it was funny. I was on the phone with Reese and I was like, Oh, animal controls here. And we both were like, yep, Bella Rose. And you know, like I said, she had a moment where she was like, Rachel, see, I told you, you need to quit showing this stuff, but I would rather be a beacon for truth and show people the reality because even though it was a minor inconvenience for me, ah, come here. Like I have had people on my channel tell me that they had originally wanted to be a breeder and then they changed their mind. Come here, girly. Bella Rose. Good girl. You're my sweet baby. Yes, you're feeling good. Yes, you are. Um, I've had people tell me that watching my channel changed their mind and they just, they didn't realize everything that went into it. And when they did, they didn't want to do it anymore. So for if, if, you know, if I get inconvenienced for, you know, 20, 30 minutes and he has to drive out of his way and do his, you know, do what he's get paid to do, but it stops a person from getting into this that shouldn't that ultimately probably would have because the thing about these dogs is if you don't know what you're doing and you make a mistake it and it, it typically um, results in the death of an animal okay and so <clears throat> for me if my whatever however many minutes it was of inconvenience stops an animal from dying um, because somebody wasn't knowledgeable or somebody just didn't have um the personality for it then to me that is not um that's a win right that's a win and, and as they say a win is a win <laughs> so um that's just kind of how i see it right um bella rose is doing great you know what i mean it's important to um to realize that for me personally i have a lot invested in my dogs so i uh, it's it it doesn't serve me not to take care of one of my dogs like you know, if we're, if we're speaking in purely business terms right now, this dog had 13 puppies for me. It does not serve me to not take care of her and risk her life so that she can't do that again for me. You know what I mean? But I do recognize that there are people out there that don't do right. So like I said, if you really aren't sure, if you don't know, then you should call. You know what I mean? Because in the end, it doesn't hurt me at all. Um, it, it, it just, it's a, like I said, a minor inconvenience, but it's really not a big deal. And you're just checking to make sure that the animal is safe and being taken care of. And she is, you know what I mean? So, um, you know, it's only been a couple days. I think I took her in on Monday. Now we're, what we're at, are we on Saturday now, I guess? So, um, you know, she's, she's, I don't know how much more weight she's put on, but she's definitely put on quite a bit of weight so far. Um, and anyway, so I did run out of wormer, um, and, uh, and I'm waiting on that. It's supposed to be delivered today. So, um, unfortunately she's still going to be positive for hook whenever I take her. No, actually, no, she won't because I take her in on Wednesday. So that gives me enough time to worm her because it's a three day treatment. Um, so anyway, so long story short, you know, when in doubt, don't be afraid to call. Don't feel bad. It's not a big deal. I'm not mad. I get it. Like I said in the other video, I understand how startling this is. Um, but I also, I also want to encourage any of the breeders that are watching me, don't, um, ooh, got some loose stools, probably from the worms. Don't allow your, um, don't allow your, um, what you see here or your fear, don't allow your fear of showing people the bad to affect you. You know what I mean? To, to, to prevent you from doing um, the truth telling, right? Like if no one knows how hard it can be, then everyone is gonna try. And that has a really negative impact. Come here. On, um, on the breed as a whole, like it just does. So, um, so anyway, it's just something to think about. Um, you, I think I know what you've done. I think I know what you've done. Yes, I do. I think I know what you've done. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. 
Yes, I do. Yeah. I had one, I did one day of treatment for her, and then I realized that I didn't have enough to continue her treatment. And um, anyway, I think it was just enough to bust her guts up a little bit, not enough to worm her. And so I've like, I've basically, see, and that's the thing about it, it's so hard. So like basically because I tried, I, I, I wormed her, but I didn't know how much I had. When I did that, I probably busted up a lot of the, her beneficial bacteria in her gut. Um, and then because it wasn't enough to completely worm her, now the worms are obviously still there and they're doing their thing. And so now I've, I've created a problem. Um, and, uh, like I said, I've got <clears throat> wormer on the way today, but just so you know, if you ever do that, the answer is kefir or yogurt. But, um, you know, I use kefir or I think it's kefir or whatever it is. Really wonderful probiotic, um, and so anyway, so you really, being a, a good breeder is very much almost like being a clinician in a way. I mean, it's like you really need to know a lot. You need to know where you made a mistake so that you know how to fix it. So I'll get her some beneficial bacteria today, help her gut repair, and and then complete her worming. She loves tilicum. I don't know why, but she loves Tilly. Good girl. Come on. So anyway, I'm going to let y'all go. Hope you enjoyed the video hope you enjoyed the update on bella rose but she's doing good and she's going to continue to do well so y'all have a good day and i will talk at you laters bye